Welcome back to the Friday Club. Really pleased to have you here. This week's guest is the brilliant Dominic Glasgow, Digital Media Manager at Strathallan School. Dom, hi, and thank you so much for meeting with us today. Hi, Sophie. Thank you for having me. So really pleased to hear about you. I know that you're a Geordie father of two, currently living in Scotland, and you've got lots of things to tell us about visual storytelling, all things digital, in the context of Strathallan School up in rural Perthshire. Before we do dive in, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Strathallan, please? Yeah, of course. So um, as you mentioned, I'm a Geordie father, um, a father of two uh, um, living in Scotland, been in love with Scotland since I was probably five years old, ever since I first came up here with my family. Um, and my background is in storytelling. So working in press, um, working in press offices and working with journalists. And that just was a natural transition for me. There was an opportunity um, at Strathallan and it just was a perfect fit. Um, we are blessed and surrounded by beautiful countryside here. So coming to work here never feels like a chore. Um, and again, I'm sure we'll go into a bit more, but there's so many stories to tell and that is what I'm passionate about. So yeah, that's just a little bit about me. My role is digital media manager. So everything from content creation, social media management, creation, um, live streams, all the way through to paid advertising and kind of getting the brand out there in a digital way. And that's what we've been doing for the last two or three years since I've been in the role. That's really exciting um, and a few things to touch on already. Um, one of the most important things for me, having also loving Scotland and going on holiday there a lot, is that you are in this highly desirable location. How have you seen demand for rural independent schools change as a result of the pandemic? Yeah, it was very fascinating, actually. So in first lockdown, the the biggest amount of um, inquiries came from state skills, um, more local. Um, and then in second lockdown, we saw a massive shift in the narrative to that kind of let's escape London message um, and, you know, look further north. Throughout all of that, though, our, not only our, um, but I know from other colleague schools um, across Scotland, we have had a massive increase in um, attraction from America. Um, as well as other countries, but I would say uh, is a place that we hadn't particularly been um, uh, targeting, uh, just a natural increase of organic um, referrals and search from Nashville to California was huge. Um, and that was from the start of lockdown all the way through, and it's still ongoing now. So it's it's great for us, obviously, to, to know that we're being looked at from America. Um, and it's quite exciting because we obviously have some American students and their integration with the Scottish culture here is really fascinating as well, especially um, we have we've had some students from Nashville who are very musical. We have a very musical school, so they've kind of fit in perfectly um, and added a bit of their own country culture to uh, Strathallan. Amazing. And, you know, you mentioned that a big part of the Strath experience is the Scottish culture and obviously the location. How do you go about conveying what that's about to parents who are, say, in America or aren't, who aren't familiar with the area themselves? Yeah, it's a huge part of school here, as it is uh, with all schools in Scotland. We have a traditional music and Scottish culture department who do a, an incredible role at conveying it at a curriculum level. So that's everything from piping, tenor drumming, um, highland dancing, um, all the way through to kind of, you know, the fun things of reels. Um, so almost every year in the school, every part of the school gets involved. Our junior pupils get involved with piping. Um, and the way that we showcase it is, and it kind of comes to how we do social in general, is we like to share things that we enjoy. Um, and it's just that, you know, that nice rubric of, if you enjoy it, you, it'll get shared. Um, so, and also we have, we showcase what our uh, pipe band does very well, which is, They've been playing with some um, rock bands recently. They were invited on stage by the Red Hot Chili Pipers. Um, so we share things like that. And that kind of organically gets a lot of reach because people are proud of their, their kids, but also um, in the piping world, it's very popular. We we also have a folk band. Um, and I mentioned earlier Highland Dancing. We actually had a German student who fell in love with Highland Dancing when she was here. 
and wanted to continue doing that when she was at home. So the way that we convey it is we just try and showcase as much of it. Um, and we encourage all of our tutors, our instructors um, to, you know, pick up their phones, press record, and then see what we can make from it um, at the end of that, whether that's a reel or whether it's a, a longer form piece of content. I think that's really important, isn't it? It's bringing all of the staff in a school into content creation. And I think it's something that you've done really well at Straff. I've really enjoyed speaking with you about your digital strategy because it is so innovative. It's so forward thinking. Can you tell us a little bit about your digital vision for Straff Allen School? Yeah, of course. Our digital vision is simple but to be out there. Um, because we weren't in a big way um, prior to um, my role being created. Um, our digital vision centers on a lot of user generated content and, you know, doing what skills do naturally. Um, there isn't a single day here without something going on. We're very unique, um, not in just our location, but also in the fact that we're six days a week. Um, you have CCF, so you have cadets and in the same day that you might have, um, you know, careers advice training that you might have um, clay pigeon shooting here at the academy that you might have a hockey match. There's so much going on that every single day, um, our digital strategy essentially is to just showcase the best of that um, and then use that content in, in u- unique ways um, to reach new people, but then also generate leads. But in a it's, it's less of an aggressive stance, um, more of a, if every single piece of content that we can create showcases the best of the school, then it doesn't matter which channel a parent finds us on, a prospective parent, um, they are gonna find a kind of similar high quality content that isn't just a one-off every few years, you know, a good video. We want to be producing good quality content every single week so that if you remember us, uh, we stick in your head and you come back and you want to look at more of what Strath Allen's doing and ultimately, you know, follow the school, whether you're a parent here, a pupil, an ex-pupil or someone that's just kind of interested. Absolutely. And I think that comes across really well when you're speaking about it. Um, one of the things that I found really interesting is that your website is now focused on admissions. And we hear a lot from schools that try to cater to everyone on the website, others who want it to just be for admissions. So there does seem to be some debate around it. How difficult was it for you to get the new website up and running when you joined Strathallen and make that change to make it admissions focused? I wouldn't actually say it was difficult um, because when we explained um, and showed, more importantly, the way in which it works for someone landing on a website. Um, I think the biggest thing was there wasn't a massive difficulty in it, but explaining that actually in so many cases, and this goes for almost every single external outlet, they're not there for current parents or people. We have internal applications, we have internal comms, um, we have ways of messaging with our current people's parents and community. Um, and I think it was that trust building. So as soon as different departments saw that actually their the best of their work would still be showcased, that they could also still have a voice within the school. That was one of the things that was enabled. So really working on our internal communications um, and enabled us to be bold with our external communications. Um, and, I, you know, we I'm we're very data driven. So, you know, um, we were able to show them straight off the bat how many people were looking at the website and, you know, the homepage being that personalized, it adds a touch which um, goes through all of our uh, kind of touch points with applicants. Um, and we want to be personal. Uh, and I, I think that also is mirrored in a lot of what we do in terms of of communicating what's going on at the school it's very personal you know we credit um staff or students if they've done the photography or the footage we credit the pupils we really kind of bring them to the front because ultimately without them we wouldn't be here so instead of hiding it behind just really good in-house photography we want to make sure that the stories are being told because ultimately they're the stories that will get people interested 
There might be people listening to this, Tom, who haven't seen the Strathallan School website and it is highly personalised. Would you mind just telling us about what that personalisation looks like and explaining it here um, and why you felt that was really important to implement on the website? Yeah. Thank you. I think it, to understand the website, we wanted to get, we wanted to showcase everything that the school does, but almost in three sentences. And one of the best ways to do that was to allow our users to pretty much personalize their journey straight from the first interaction with the website. So if you go on strafalan.co.uk, the first thing you will see is I am, and there's a box for who you are and your age. And then you go through two more um, pull downs, which talk, uh, goes through uh, different hobbies or different activities, which reflect all of the, I think it's now 70 extracurricular activities that we do here at the school. Um, and then you pick your curriculum or what you're interested in studying. Um, that then mirrors um, our, uh, prospectus requests. So all that information is then pulled through. Um, and then that really helps inform our admissions of, you know, what are you genuinely interested in? Are, are we talking about fives here in mathematics? Or are we talking about chess and the music department? Um, because for everyone, you know, there is absolutely no need for us to shout about our sporting accolades to someone who's interested in piano. Um, when we also have a fantastic department of music who can, you know, shout all day about their success. So the kind of the the theory behind it is, um, you know, what again, I'll, <laughs> I said earlier, what would you like to see? So if I if you were going on a website, you're looking for a school for your uh, daughter or son, you know, what would you like to see? I would love to see something where you get to pick those things straight off the bat and then the rest of that journey is very personalized to you. And that's something that I know um, is becoming more common with more digital perspectives and it's brilliant to see. You know, there's in this day and age with um, the availability of QR codes um, and pretty much everything, you know, you can pull through that really personalized experience. One of the things that we do and we've done for a while now is once you input those fields into a, a prospectus request, that then generates a short video that rep, which pulls through um, the hobby and uh, um, footage of the hobby, footage of the curriculum that you want as well. So it'll say, hi, Sophie, um, welcome to Strafal and here's a taste of life here. And if you're interested in piping and drumming, if you're interested in, um, let's say, uh, media, then those things are gonna get pulled through in a little video for you that just makes your um kind of introduction to is a bit more personal yeah and it, and it is a real wow moment i think when you're looking for schools and it is such an emotional decision that you're making you've said yourself that this was something of a bold move do you have any feedback since you've made this move to be more personalized that you can share with us yeah um it was a bold move and because as you kind of put earlier our website was that catch-all Previously, I think the navigation was about 72 titles or if you considered drop downs. And so to move to something that was a lot smaller, a lot more personalized um, was definitely something that the school had never done before um, and kind of really led us forward in that way. Um, the feedback that we've got so far has been brilliant. You know, um, we have had parents, you know, say to our admissions team, you know, that they felt that this was personalized, that they enjoyed it. When we send out prospectus requests, for example, um, we handwrite the addresses. Again, it's just a small little touch, but you know, getting that through your door, especially if it's to um, you know, your fourteen-year-old, um, your thirteen-year-old, your ten-year-old, they're getting something through the door, which you know, it's not a Hogwarts letter, but it's mm -hmm. as close as we could possibly get, um, yeah. and it's a little bit of magic for them, and they can use their phones to kind of see the world in a different way. Um, and kind of see the school in a way that they might not do. We're very aware, you know, we're in rural Scotland. For a lot of people, it's not that easy to get to us. We're not far from Edinburgh, Glasgow. We're only an hour from Glasgow, for example. But you might not be able to visit. And a lot of what we've done, the website led this, but a lot of what we've done is using digital to allow people to explore us in a different way. And the feedback has been brilliant. Um, we've had nothing but positive feedback on you know, I'm kind of just hitting those personal things that, you know, lead to conversions. And the, yeah. negative, 
the uh, you know I don't want to blow our trumpet too much, but the data speaks for itself. We're on uh, free record years um, of recruitment through COVID, which we're you know incredibly proud of. Uh, we have a very um, tired admissions team, as I'm sure you can imagine, and they're working yep. very hard. Um, but for myself and the rest of the marketing team, we're you know we're delighted because it means we're reaching people who who may have never considered us before. And as you said before, it's an emotional decision. It's a huge investment. Um, and so the little things that schools can do to make that stand out and feel a lot more personal is, you know, it goes a long way. Um, and that's the feedback that we've got so far. I'm really glad to hear it. And you can hear how passionate you are as well when you're talking about it. Um, and I know that the personal element is so much more than just the website and what you're doing in your prospectuses and your processes. And for most schools, the website is, of course, the front of house, the very start of any digital strategy. It's quite often the first place that they would look um, if they were going to do something digital. But you've also talked about your approach to social media. Um, and one of the things that you told me about previously that really stuck with me is that you focus on the shareability of your content to drive your social media reach. And I'm wondering if you would touch on that for us, for people listening, Dom. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I, it's straight out of the University of Michigan's playbook. Um, they were recognized as the leading university for social media for a very long time. And they were asked, you know, what do you measure, you know, out of reach, impressions, likes, link clicks, what do you measure? And they said shares um, and that stuck with me. And that was about seven years ago that I heard that in kind of early videos being shared on uh, Facebook. And that is really our digital approach. You know, um, if we can create something that can be shared, we're no longer in an echo chamber. Um, and there is a huge power behind organic uh, social media. If you can get it to work for you. Um, so a lot of people will get stuck and you can spend exhaustive amounts of money trying to get Facebook to work for you. But if you can create something that's worth sharing, then that will have massive benefits for you in ways that you'll never imagine. Um, you will reach new people um, who genuinely will never have heard of you. Um, and we know that, you know, we're very aware of that. Um, and so that's been the exciting thing for me as a digital media manager here is what is the shareable content of the school? What is our, um, not just a unique selling point because I'm, you know, that's almost irrelevant at this point. What are we doing day to day at the school that we can share? How can we use our skills to enable that to be viewed in the best way possible? Um, or viewed in a way that parents want to share. And it could be as simple as, you know, is it a photo album? Uh, from a, a cross-country run and if it is where are you linking that back to are you linking it back to your main platforms um are you linking that back to uh the uh the website and kind of making it work for you so that shareability for us is about the backlinks um and what channels you want because the different platforms mean so much you know we have um we are just kind of beginning our journey on tiktok um, and there's some really good skills in that space already. I uh, highly recommend anyone with TikTok to follow Millfield um, and Felstead. They're doing an incredible job. Um, but those platforms for the younger generation, absolutely brilliant, you know. Um, and also, the, so I could go on about this forever. This is what I really enjoy. Um, yeah. Snapchat, are you on there? What are you doing on there that's meaningful? Are you creating content that your pupils can share? Because it's your pupils who are on Snapchat and they will be sharing it with all of their friends at different schools. Um, and there's some really great tools that you can use then. And, and for example, we've created Snapchat filters um, that our pupils can use to, again, to share um, and be proud of their school. And that ultimately that's the sense that we want to have is that people are proud of their school, whether that's former pupils, current parents, the community, the local community, you know, if you do anything with uh, corporate, corporate social responsibility, how are you sharing that in a way that people can be proud of it? Um, and it's almost, uh, there's there's almost many strategies for every single platform. So LinkedIn, for example, is every single member of your senior management on LinkedIn? If not, why not? And are they linked to your page? 
um, because their shares and the the audiences that they will have grown. You know, we're not getting to the point where um, it's it's changed so much, but um, people aren't in the same roles for fifteen years anymore. There's a lot, lot more, especially with the great resignation. There's a lot more movement. And so uh, platforms like LinkedIn are absolutely brilliant for, you know, that shareability, especially it's because it's a growing platform, but having your um, team members, uh, your staff be proud of what their school is doing and what their organization is doing. And I think that's the biggest kind of part of this is um, how can we make people proud of the school and what can we do every day to kind of fulfill that? I love that approach. And one of the things that really sticks out to me um, is because I think a lot of marketing is focused at parents. Um, but I really like that you're focusing things that are for students as well with things like Snapchat filters. Um, and I think that sometimes isn't forgotten and because students are you know, the main part of the school. But I think it's really interesting that they have something that they can share um, and bringing you know, that element of the community to life and I just love hearing that. I could sit and talk to you about that all day. I've got one last question for you, Don, because it comes up a lot in the Friday Club community for our school marketers who would like to do more with their digital. But of course, in a, like any school, there's something of a democratic process. There's lots of different stakeholders to get involved in the project, to get on board with digital proposals. Do you have any advice for other school marketers who might be in the same position and perhaps want to propose something internally and want to find the best way to get everybody on board? Yeah, buy-in is very important. Um, and I think um, we've been lucky because we've been able, to, we've been quite, again, bold, but then ambitious. But then we have the data there to back us up and say, mm -hmm. look, when we did this, this is, this is what happened. Um, and and why that's good for the school. Um, it's not easy. You know, a lot of teachers are very afraid of um, social media in so many different ways. Um, and it's about that balance of what they're comfortable with. I know there's lots of other schools similar to us where there might be teachers who are very happy with it, you know, running a Twitter account. That's brilliant. And that's user generated content that can go do wonders for a school. Um, but forcing someone to do something they're not comfortable with is something that we massively avoid, you know? So if you have a teacher who's got lots of years of experience behind them, you know, and, you know, they don't want to get step in front of a camera to do a TikTok, fine. What, what are they comfortable with? Are they comfortable being a thought leader? Are they comfortable potentially being put forward to, um, you know, write a column? Are they, are they, um, or a longer form interview on, you know, why they enjoy working there, especially if you had someone who's working there for such a long time, is there an opportunity there for you to show, showcase them to your audience again um, in ways that they've never seen before? You know, is there a story about Mr. or Mrs. Um, uh, Apple, I'm just making up a name here, that, you know, a different side to them that, that people may not have seen. And I think that's one of the biggest things for us is, We've been able to show the success of when people buy in, um, and, but we, we, you know, we've never said, oh, we should have done this. We've always come to people and said, look, we have this idea, How, what do you think? And I think it's about that creative adaptability. For I know that for most of the teams, it will be tough because you're working on your own, for example, but there's tools like Hero Post and there's so many powerful free tools now um, just for example, for creating videos, there's DaVinci Resolve, which is free, which is absolutely outstanding. Um, you know, there's so many tools now where you can be the compromise, the creative compromise that allows you to pull the school forward. We've had to drag our school forward, um, but actually when we've, when we've enabled staff who've got their own ideas to kind of go forward and, and, and when they get excited about something, it's really hard not to also get excited um, and, and to kind of work with them on that. Uh, a, a key example for us is um, we had a big thing, a whole school concert outside. And, you know, it was incredibly ambitious, but we just ran with it. We went with it with the school and it's the best video that the school has ever produced. Um, and it was hard not to kind of feed into that ambition. And we reported back to say, look, this is what we've done. And we still have 
um, prospective parents getting in touch saying, we saw this video, we think it's amazing. We, the community must be great, you know? And so that's an example of us being, you know, we put aside some of our time, which, you know, could have been used to, you know, create more leads. We used our expertise or we got in expertise to be that creative compromise and worked with our staff to kind of bolster their ambition. And the payout from that was absolutely huge. And I think that's something that we, I would always recommend to marketers of, you have skills, you have knowledge in an industry um, that your, the staff are probably fascinated by, but don't fully know. So how can you explain it to them in, in ways that matter? Um, and for us, that was, you know, a, a massive point last, last term. And we're excited because we know now because of that, so many of our members of staff are willing to come forward, are coming forward and are saying, I've got this idea, how do I make it work? Um, and we're in a really nice position now where those relationships are being built more. So yeah, there's no magic, you know, um, I wish there was a magic spell for buy-in, but that endless enthusiasm mixed with being able to help others creatively and then also reporting back is huge um don't be afraid to shout about your success you know especially i know there's some schools where you might be the marketer the admissions all in one shout about how good your year has been um you know even if you're not um a new record for recruitment you're potentially a new record for more females than the males in your school um or something similar to that for demographics shout about that be be positive about it and let the school um support you and be proud about you as well i think that's something that we you know we're very keen to do this is the first time i've you know done, done an interview like this but um internally we you know we update our staff all the time because they don't also see all of our social media so i think for us is a monthly update on look here's everything that's happened and the feedback again for that is absolutely brilliant because they feel like they're part of a community that's moving forward um and again, it's quite an easy, small thing to do with, you know, a little newsletter, but it means that they're, again, proud. And <laughs> I think if anything, like our social strategy is that it's, you know, generating pride through content. Amazing. That is the perfect note to wrap up on, generating pride through content. Dom, I have really enjoyed speaking with you today. And there are so many bits that offer great value for anybody listening to this. So massive massive thank you for coming on and sharing your insight with us today really appreciate it and you know we'll be following Strath Allen very closely to see what you do next thank you so much for joining us um if and anyone, we'll talk soon that's great no I just want to say if anyone ever wants to get in touch find me on LinkedIn um I'm always happy to discuss these types of things collaboration across schools is really important so thank you so much for your time and uh, have a great friday everyone absolutely thank you so much dom talk soon great thanks bye